we used gravity to make epoxy flow. In this video, we're going to teach you step by step how to DIY yourself to professional signage using epoxy and a little know-how. We took an old table and refurbished it. We created a sign so that when we went to our professional home shows or even the flea markets, people would recognize our name and stop at our booth. We did live demos and in this video, we're gonna show you how to create a sign in epoxy project that stands out. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. You got this. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. We didn't need a lot of parts. We went to the hardware store, we grabbed some two by twos and we wanted to create a rack that would hold our pieces as they dried. So what we did is took this old table, we sanded it down, we created our drying rack and we used paint and primer in one to make it a nice color. I like doing a flat color so that the light won't reflect off of our actual bench or our display. It's really gonna showcase the epoxy project. I'm simply prepping this old table by sanding with 220 grit, and then I'm gonna create a perimeter. That's what I'm doing with these fur strips. I wanna stop any potential drips from going off of my table when I do a live demo with our epoxy, so these strips will stop any drippage. I'm gonna do two coats of paint and primer in one. Two light coats is better than one heavy coat. I'm gonna use a one quarter inch sheet of acrylic to act as the back of my sign. I'm gonna sand it with 220 grit just to abrade it so I get good adhesion between the MDF and the acrylic. After I sandwich it using our quick coat, that epoxy will dry really fast. I'll be ready to really build this sign. The reason I'm using acrylic is so I have backing that's translucent or transparent so I could light it up with those LED strips. I just need one coat of our quick coat. It's gonna dry in a couple of hours, but because I abraded that acrylic, it's gonna have a mechanical bond and it won't release. I'm just using a squeegee to put a thin coat, about one ounce per square foot. And then I'll just clamp it down and weigh it down so that I get a fantastic bond. After it's dry, I'm gonna trim it to size. I didn't want to get the size perfect in the beginning. That way, if when I was sandwiching it together, it moved a little bit, I wouldn't be in trouble. I used a 1 8 inch router bit on the top and the bottom of the project so the epoxy will flow. I got my weenie roller prepared by sanding off the excess paint, and I'm ready for two coats of black paint and primer in one. This is a good backdrop. I've just created a substrate that looks like normal MDF, but again, we have that acrylic on the back side. The challenge was create a sign for our booth when I do a home show that's gonna attract attention. Why not use the very product that we use to create countertops to make a professional sign that's backlit, that draws attention, that showcases exactly what you can create using Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. I have some additives. We're gonna use our bright silver, our white metallic, and our diamond dust. Then we're gonna use some opaque dyes, black and white, and we're gonna use a translucent dye, which is ocean blue. Then we're gonna use one more metallic color called sky blue, some spray paint. We're gonna mix it all together into a pour. I'm gonna move this piece around to give it a very visually interesting look. And then underneath, as you've seen, we've created an acrylic back. This is transparent, this is see-through. I'm gonna route her down to that with our signage. We'll fill it up, it's gonna be pro, let's go! Guys, we've actually uh, put this in front of a space heater to make it more viscous, which consequently makes it easier to mix and easier to pour makes it flow better. It's just better off in the winter to heat this up before you go. Because we have a long open working time, hot epoxy isn't gonna set up too fast for you to get all of these effects complete. What's really fun about this pour is we're creating a color for two companies. We've got Polytech and Stone Coat Countertops. We've teamed up so that we can create some of the best chemistry on the planet with real world application techniques. So we're creating Polytex colors and Stone Coat colors in the same signage because at the World of Concrete, we're gonna share a booth. 
So why not share a sign? As you can see, there's really no method to pouring it in there. I'm just actually putting contrasting colors on top of each other so that within that bucket, it all doesn't kind of mute together. I like that, but sometimes if you just want to use a couple of colors, you could kind of mute it together so it's very, very subtle. There's just no wrong way to, oh, look at that coming off that stick. And really, that's what you're creating when you add colors together. You can use these same techniques found in this video. Over countertops, tabletops, you can make a custom man cave bar top. All I'm doing here, guys, is just touching anything with surface tension just to meld these together and then it'll all flow together. If you don't help the material out, it's not gonna flow in those spots. It'll create like a, a divot. So that's all I'm doing here is just helping it along now. You know, we get asked a lot in this technique, do you have to tilt the board to move the epoxy? No, if you're going over an old countertop that's in place, no, you could do it just like this. Yeah, this is pretty cool, man. I, I'm liking it. By utilizing the heat gun and also gravity to tilt this board creates organic movement and realism when mimicking stone. All right, guys, by torching it right here in the middle, I'm gonna make this move more than the rest of it. So you can really paint with heat and tilting and messing around with the material. I'm really gonna kinda heat the middle and this corner up, start working it back into it that way. Yeah, look at that movement now. Guys, I have videos where we just do this without tilting. It's absolutely fun, but I like getting the stacking sediment style this way. It's just gorgeous. This is looking, this is looking fun, man. Guys, it's similar to this piece here that we did. You know, a lot of the same colors, not as many bright blues in it. And I think that's gonna look really nice backlit. It's gonna contrast and, and pop off the page. I think I'll torch this, just get some of those bubbles out and then I'll pull the tape off and work those edges. This will flow right over those edges and give me a nice, beautiful sign. After I pull that tape, I'm just gonna go through here and rub those edges, and all that's gonna do is lubricate that edge, break surface tension, so that the material will flow over that edge and give you a matching edge to the surface. It's amazing the potential of these two bottles. We formulated this product to be versatile, to work over countertops, tabletops, floors, showers, hearths, desktops, and more. Guys, we actually make a huge mistake later in the video with this beauty right here. Now don't worry, we fix it and we'll show you how later. We wanna know in the comments below, do you prefer this piece before the accident or after we fixed it? A, before, B, after. Let us know in the comments below. Now, back to the video. We made a mistake, guys. Our CNC router didn't go far enough to the left here and it started to router in the logo on top of a logo. So it really screwed up the whole sign. What do we do? I'm actually gonna fill this sign in. All these letters I'm just gonna fill with epoxy and we're gonna re-pour the sign instead of sandwiching acrylic together again. I made a mistake which turned out to be a happy accident. I was able to use my stone coat countertop colors on half the sign and Polytech colors on the other half. I was really able to showcase the ability to customize epoxy. I'm glad I did. I did like it before and I did like it after. I'm interested. What color did you like best before or after our happy accident? Remember, punch perfectionism in the face, have fun, learn from your failures, and that's how you become a craftsman. I'm using three type of color additives. I'm using metallic powders, epoxy dyes, and even spray paint. I'm using our company colors in each different cup so that I can pour half of it in blue tones and half of it in white and black tones. What we're gonna do is pour everything at the top of our project and then tilt it down so that it really runs and flows organically. I wasn't really pleased at first because I started to wash out all the color effects. Because I started at the top, it somewhat muted it. But then as we tilted it back and forth a little bit and let the epoxy additives do their magic, it started to look natural. It looked really clean and crisp. I really like this piece after it's set for a little bit. Our epoxy formulation is unique 
it's quite thick. So when I heat it up, it becomes viscous, but as it cools down, it'll stop and settle so that you don't lose your beautiful effects over the edges. It retains its style, shape, and movement. Diamond dust! I added a little bit of metallic powder into our casting epoxy. I also added some diamond dust to give it that bling and make this sign sing. I'm gonna pour our casting epoxy in these deep letters and then I'm gonna torch out the bubbles. I'm overfilling it so I could come back and sand it flush right before I do our clear top coat. Our clear top coat is simply our same stone coat countertop epoxy and clear to give this thing durability and make all the letters on the same plane so it looks professional. I'm gonna torch it and chop it just like I do all of our countertop videos and this sign is about ready to hang on my DIY station for demos. We pre-mounted a perimeter using screws and then we drilled two holes per screw for zip ties to pre-mount our LED lights to shine through the acrylic. Our booth at the World of Concrete was an absolute hit. Rhonda Draculis joined us, Mitch did demos, I did demos. We went live on Facebook and YouTube and we drew a crowd every single time. Pro tip, show what you can create and collect tons of leads. Two, one. You got this. Thanks for watching everybody. Did you change your mind about which one you preferred more, A or B, before and after? My preference is after. It was a good idea separating the colors, like two companies, two different colors melding together and creating magic. Don't forget to put your answer down there if you haven't already. We want to know what you think. Thanks guys, and we'll see you on the next video.